someone who loves the stunt department, who loves fight sequences, choreographed, whatever you want to call them, um, I was led to believe that the poor guy would be a love letter to the stunt department. The unsung heroes of film and TV. The ones who are literally breaking themselves for a chance to earn a couple of bucks and not be recognized at all for it. And instead letting the lead actor take full credit for it. I love you guys. I worship you guys. I need you guys to have more recognition. This is why I was led to believe that this was a love letter to the poor guy. When in reality, it's not. Does anyone remember Argyle? And I say that as if it's the fact that Argyle wasn't just released a couple of weeks ago. But this is essentially another version of Argyle without Matt, um, Matthew Vaughan attached to it. So it's set in Australia, specifically in Sydney. So it's all done on location, or at least 90% of it's done on location. And Ryan Gosling plays a stunt actor. Emily Blunt turn, uh, plays a cinematographer turned director, which is great. It's beautiful. These two bounce off each other brilliantly. We've seen all that action before. Great. But what movie did we actually get? We got the movie where it felt like they didn't know what the hell they were doing. It's a movie within a movie. Within a movie. Because they're making a movie and they're documenting the process of making that movie. But then they're also calling the full guy, which is the movie that we're watching. So it's a movie within a movie. Yeah, try saying that again. For me, I feel like they didn't really know what they were doing with the storyline. They were like, let's show off the stunts. Let's show off how amazing stunt departments are and all these people who are kick-ass. Yes, great. All the promo and marketing talked about how Ryan had all these multiple stunt um, doubles and he mentioned them by name, which is great because they deserve to be mentioned by name. But the storyline, what was the storyline? No, seriously, what was the storyline? That your lead actor is missing and that you need to go find them? Okay, fine, gotcha. But then a twist is revealed and it's just, it feels very undervalued or underused or just pointless. Like, you cannot put that type of twist in your movie and expect your audiences to be like, yeah, okay, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Um, this is the type of twist that you would do in movies for people who didn't know how the fuck to make movies. This is the type of twist that you would do in midday movies. This is the type of twist that you would do in, in someone trying to make their first movie. Not someone who's made their upteenth movie and knows what the hell they're doing. I, I feel like it just tried to simplify way too much and made it too oh, far away from what they were trying to capture. In all the marketing that I've been following, in all the trailers that I've been following, they've always made it clear that it was a love letter to stunts. It was a love letter to film. It was a love letter to people who don't get credit. But it's essentially just trying to kill the stunt department. It's like, why do we need you guys when the male actor can do it all? Why do we need you guys when the main star can do it all? Like, it's just trying to kill them. And it literally is that storyline. Let's kill the stunt department. It's so stupid. Um, but yeah. Also, a couple of days before I saw this movie, there was a lot of articles and a lot of hatred coming forward about how one of the actors has a piece of dialogue that says, Oh my god, it looks like Amber and Johnny was here. Which is referencing Amber Heard and Johnny Depp. Jesus fucking Christ. I thought that line was fake. I thought people were pushing a narrative that didn't exist because that court case is done and dusted. No, that line's actually in the Guardian movie. I'm sorry, I don't know about you, but referencing a court case, specifically a domestic abuse court case, in a fictional movie, does not need to be needed. That throwaway line of Amber and Johnny was here, was not needed. I can guarantee you in like five years time, nobody's gonna know who Amber and Johnny Heard's, uh, Amber Heard's and Johnny Depp's court case was all about. I can guarantee you in five years time when people rewatch this movie, everyone's gonna be like, who's Johnny and Amber? What do you want about? Even I sat there and I, it took me out of the movie because I was like, hold on, I have to think about this. I don't understand what's going on and I know the court case because I followed it. But no. The Fall Guy is just another version of Argyle. The only upside is that you get to watch stunt teams do their thing. Downside is, it's, it's, could have been better. It just, it wasn't great. Also, 
as an Australian, this is hurts me to say, but do we really sound that wanky? Like, we sound like auto wankers. Like, I'm not even kidding. I sat there and I was like, that is not Australian. That is Americans putting on Australian accents. But I know that's not because those are Australian actors in shows, in movies that I have seen them in. One half of the Umbilical Brothers, one of the actors from Buck, three of the other actors making other cameos. And I was like, we do not sound like that. They do not sound like that. I've seen them act. They do not sound like wankers. But they sound like wankers in this movie. <laughs> What have we done? Are we like really bad for me starring American movies? Cause like, ugh. outside is you get to see a slice of Australia and that we actually are kind of like that in real life. So there's that too. But anyway, I don't like the full guy. It's really bad. So that's my opinion.